What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, January 18th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are our top headlines. First up, Biden weighs banning natural gas exports to save China. I'm not kidding you. That's the headline. Next up, Indonesia to abandon 23% renewable energy target by 2025. Next up, progressive lawmakers line up behind costly fix for error they made in the renewable energy plan. Again, not kidding you. Next up, market to be short oil from 2025 onwards, according to Occidental CEO at Davos. And finally, energy information has never mattered more, so it's time to reform the IEA and the EIA. We will then hop over and quickly cover what's going on in the finance department, um, specifically what it happens with oil and gas prices. We did see the API uh, project crude oil inventory numbers, which you will get uh, along with natural gas storage numbers as you listen to this on Thursday. And then we will let you guys get out of here. Again, for Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We are looking forward to kicking this off. Stu, where do you want to begin? Oh, my goodness. Let's start with our good buddy, Biden. He weighs in banning natural gas exports to save the climate. Holy cow, Batman. This is out of Politico. The Biden administration is launching a review that could tap the brakes on booming U.S. natural gas export. We're the largest exporter of natural gas in the world. We're really hoping that the DOE will pause any new permits for industry because we know that the Biden administration really needs a climate win in order for them to win the public, win the election. This is criminal. If these politicians want to be elected or reelected this upcoming presidential election, they're going to have to make some bold choices and some bold moves in the words of scooby-doo rut row (laughs) second order of effects are going to go horribly on this one yeah i mean i think here's the problem the problem is natural gas is probably the only thing that can save us from climate change with while with while also not absolutely destroying the communities when it comes to how much energy we have available. So it's absolutely insane that they want to do this. Um, You know, we're about to cover why the EIA and the IEA need reform. The Department of Energy needs some reform. Oh, absolutely. And, and also when you, they're, they're looking at $34 trillion in debt. But when you Mm -hmm. talk about the exports, the math for exports, you got to have exports when you're in debt. $110.5 $110.5 billion in exports this year. Uh, geez. All right. Anyway, um, I, this has got so much in it. We could go for another hour, but let's go ahead and go to Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Indonesia is really having to under have some problems. Indonesia to abandon 23% renewable energy targets by 2025. They can't afford it. Yeah. Flat out. They just can't afford it. Indonesia, this is a, a quote from uh, Arflan Tassler. Uh, he's the mineral resources uh, minister. We have to be realistic, Arflan said, when asked about the plan to lower the renewable energy. We will adhere to the commitment we made, but we have to work toward it with what we have. You got to you got to stay within your limits. I mean, and I applaud them. It's not that it's dead. Ding dong. The wicked commitment is dead. This is, you know, hey, we got we have to go ahead and do this gradually. This is like the UK's prime minister that says, hey, we're going to delay it. And everybody absolutely went nuts. Um in contrast, he saw his coal com- uh, at production reach an all-time high at 775 million tons. More than 66% of it was exported to other folks. You know, King Coal's going to be around. We just got to have the technology and the money spending to, to go clean coal, natural gas, nuclear, until the wind and solar technology can be sustainable. 
Yeah, and until we also figure out what's going on with the grid. I mean, it's no surprise Indonesia is switching back and trying to combat their rising energy uses by using less renewables because that's harder to do. So, I mean, this is this only is shocking if you don't listen to the show. So I'm sure everybody who listens to the show is well aware um, that this is coming down um, and we'll start probably seeing this around the globe. Exactly. I, it's just it's starting. It's one of the things is a pattern, Michael. Progressive right, law. Next. Or, next one here. Progressive lawmakers line up behind costly fix for error they made in renewable energy plan. Michael, holy smokes, Batman! What an error! Grab your wallet. Here are the details. Um, okay, no cap was placed on the tax credits. In 2022, they passed the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, and as Dan Bongino calls it, the Porculus Bill, with a cost of an estimated $1.2 trillion, far ex exceeding the uh, original claims. The biggest elements of the law are expected now to be $263 billion. So, and those tax that did, didn't have caps on it, 30% of the product of the project was given to them by the government in subsidies. That is what this is all about. It's almost like they wanted to do this in the first place. Uh, it, it is, uh, listen to this. Uh, Kasten, also an avid uh, IRA supporter, now admits to the gravity of the problem, saying that 80 mm -hmm. percent of the clean energy progress we've made with the Inflation Reduction Act will be lost yeah. unless we reform transmission, transmission and permitting. So we have gone into bankruptcy as a country to put the IRA into um, uh, motion inflation as at a effective rate, I'm going to say 17% because of food and everything else. And then you take a look at this, it's worthless. It is absolutely worthless. And the only way that we're going to get out of here is out of inflation and lower our debt is lower energy prices. How do you do that? You use natural gas, you use nuclear, you do the regulatory issues. This was a telling, total telling article. Unbelievable. All I got to say is what's a few trillion between friends? Oh, we're going to have that T-shirt, baby. We are having that T-shirt. What's next? Baby. Let's go to market to be short of oil from 2025 on onwards, says Occidental CEO at Davos. Hey, I was surprised to see her there. Um, I said hi to her in the hall, but. She uh, kind of was a little busy. I, I'm surprised. I'm not surprised by her comments, um, and I'm not surprised that she's there. Quite honestly, is because Occidental has done a great job. You've, in order to survive in this uh, carbon nutty world, they've gone down the carbon route and are getting the carbon subsidies and everything else. Um, uh, Holub said that uh, the near term, the markets are not balanced. Supply demand is not balanced, adding that 2025 and beyond is when the world is going to be short of oil. So this is sh what she is saying is in direct contrary to what the EIA are saying and the IEA. Both of those are, you know, like missing some uh, cookies upstairs. I think this is another quote from her. I think the industry is going is looking at a scenario where we will be able to do all the right things we need to do as part of the mm -hmm. transition. She's got a level head on her shoulders, even though she's at Davos. I hope she takes a bath on the way out. She really does. I mean, we did the the Oxy Crown Rock deal we did on the deal spotlight. Little expensive, yep. little expensive. But if prices are going to rise significantly. Maybe the deal doesn't look that bad to begin with. Um, but yeah, it's surprising to see her at Davos, but also not Oxy's a, a, a 
if you had to say a progressive oil and gas company, they'd qualify as one from the standpoint of they dabble in ESG, they dabble in, you know, the carbon capture space, they've got their stuff. So they're, they're more, you know, it doesn't surprise me that Oxy there, I did see on CNBC this morning, uh, Michael Worth Chevron is well represented there. So they're all there, man. Hey, I got to give a shout out to Jamie Dimon uh, this morning. He had a, a, a also an interesting comment. He said, why can't we all just get along and say, hey, quit having uh, the Democrats start, you know, yelling at the, the MAGAs because the MAGAs actually had some good ideas. And so he just says, hey, why don't we all have discussions? I liked what he had to say. Um, I don't always like what he has to say, but I want to give a shout out to folks when they do say something that was nice. I don't agree with everything, MAGA, but I don't agree with being yelled at either. So, Absolutely. all right, let's go to the next one. This one's kind of funny, Michael. Energy information has never mattered more, so it's time to reform the IEA and the EIA. This one's a little bit wild of a story because they have said, Michael, trust us we need oh, to no. be trusted is the the uh, the whole davos thing and i'm like what you think i, I wouldn't trust you um with my dog uh, and, and so i'm sitting here thinking then they come back and say we're gonna take all um news and media outlets and and we're gonna have the disinformation come in so anybody that doesn't own their own channels will not be able to get out yep. their own story. And guess who they kept mentioning? Elon and Twitter. They hated that. They yep. He's evil. He is like, holy smokes. Okay, so let's go in here. Uh, why is reform needed? Start with the fact the creation of the IEA was triggered by energy shock, which caused a global recession, 1974, because of the oil embargo. Pr oil prices shot up 400%. Uh, and then, uh, unbelievable. I'm going to go ahead, and this is all leading up. So you have the weaponization of the media uh, and the controls they're trying to put in place. They're trying to control your carbon. We noticed that we had the other story in this thread, carbon uh, with Occidental, and that she's very big into the carbon. We have this one. I'm going to play this video here, and it is amazing, Michael. Let's go ahead and have Miss Producer, can you play the video? We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Hmm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Holy smokes, Batman. Uh, are you downloading that app? Oh, absolutely not. That means that not only are they going to censor everything, they're going to track whether or not you eat a bug today. Did you eat your bug, Billy? Holy smokes. Again, I know I keep saying that, but Billy, you didn't eat your buggies now. You know, and so you can't go out and like, dodge bullets in the yard uh, this is ridiculous it's ridiculous i'm with you it's absolutely ridiculous and this guy just says it knows nonchalantly yeah you have a carbon tracker we'll tell you you know okay. we'll tell you when we you know we'll tell you you step outside how much carbon you're it's just unbelievable did, and one last thing did you see the guy he is one of the funniest comedians i've ever seen he stood up and he has a backdrop he stands up and says uh in the video i would i'm going to put it in the show notes he stands up and goes, I'd like to thank everybody at Davos. And he looks right over at Cower Schwab and uh, Ursula and says, he drops an F-bomb right on. Yeah, him. That was <laughs> edited, Stu, just not to burst your bubble. That was completely edited. Oh, I know it. I know it was okay, funny. Good. Oh, no, he is a comedian. I mean, he also does the same thing at The View. He, and he just drops right on in. He is a heck of a comedian. Yeah. I, I love him. So anyway, I thought it was funny. That absolutely is hilarious. All right. Off to you, dude. All right. Well, we'll shift to finance here, guys. But before we do that, we'll quickly pay the bills here. As always, this podcast 
Uh, the news and analysis you just heard and are about to hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your uh, energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous jo- job of keeping that website up to speed with everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. Um We've got a lot of great stuff. Hit the description below. You can check out all the timestamps. Email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. I mean, when I look at the the markets today, Stu, we saw S&P 500 down about five-tenths of a percentage point. Same with NASDAQ down about a half a percentage point. Bitcoin fairly flat down to 42,677. Crude oil was actually fairly flat on the day, but after uh, touching below 70 $1 $1 to see us now sitting as we record this about 550 here on the 17th at 7282. It feels like there's some later strength in the markets throughout the night. We did see it about um, noon today on the 17th. Price is all the way again, a little bit below 71 in that upper 70. So, um, continue to find support there you know despite a lot of this cold weather again part of the reason why as we move to natural gas we're, we're now down at 288 is not necessarily because of the freeze that we just had but because of what is looking going to be a end of january is going to be a little bit warmer than i think a lot of people expected so that's part of what's floating in here um all pretty quiet on the western front when it comes to oil and gas news we did see the api um, weekly crude inventory estimates you will hear both that and natural gas storage drop tomorrow um, they forecast about a 500,000 barrel uh, build in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. So that didn't have much movement on the markets. That came out about 2.30 um, yesterday. So um, good to know there, Stu. But pretty much all quiet. We, we, you know, there's a lot of potential M&As that could be going on. Everyone's kind of wrapped up in Davos right now. Um, so, you know, we're uh, we're looking forward to it. But this is our uh, our last show for the week. Oh, yeah. It, but I'll tell you what, we got us some, uh, let's see, we got some really cool folks to drop here real quick. Yeah, what, what's so, on the podcast? I was going to say Friday, you hear the podcast. Saturday, yep. you'll hear the weekly roundup. What do we got? Let me see what they got on production, and I'll tell you here in just a sec. We got us some great people coming around the corner here, and dun, 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 get a drum roll, and it is. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. We have uh, Shane Stolt. He's with Westcom. This was a fantastic uh, discussion. I I love him. He is absolutely great. We have Ron Miller from uh, the. Um, uh, he's uh, he's got a big event at the School of Mines. Absolutely a great guy. They're working on John Cash with uranium. Yes. I've got another nuclear guy that I'm getting ready to interview, and we're working next week on Michael Yawn and the grid and political problems at the border. So the grid is under attack, baby. Live from the border. Live from the border. Hey, who would have guessed? Anyway, we got a lot of great stuff going on. We do have a lot, guys. You'll hear the weekly recap on Saturday. We'll be back in your um, ears on Monday morning, recapping everything and getting you prepped for the week, guys. But with that, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. Appreciate you checking us out. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner.